Hello and welcome to this Cinema 4D tutorial, where we'll be using some free plugins and textures and make use of Cinema 4D cloth dynamic simulations. Let's get right into it, first of download the free IV tutorial file from my Gumroad page. Here we will have all the texture maps needed for the project, and our human mesh, the rest we'll create inside of Cinema. Next, install the IV plugin in your Cinema 4D plugin folder, once you are set. Grab some coffee and boost up cinema and let's create some art. Alright the file is open, and we are all good to get started. Open the C4D project file located in the folder. Here we will find our human. I'll be using a Genesis 8 mail, that I created in DAWs, you can use your or own character or go to mixamo.com and select between a number of free characters and animations but as you can tell I've already provided you with the mesh we need to follow along in the tutorial. When importing from DAWs you get duplicated maps, to fix this we simply select our material and hold down ALT then drag it on top of the other material with the same textures. All the I specular materials are basically the same, so we'll only need one specular material, be sure to keep the eyelashes separate though. Once converted remove any excess materials. So we'll end up having 8 materials, once we have all those it's time to convert our maps since I'll be using Octane Render 3.07 for this. If you are doing Cinema's physical or other render engine do what you see fit. Now opening up Octane. We can see our human here, looking decent even in basic light. Our eyelashes are located here as well, we are going to need to fix the transparency of those. Open up the eyelash material. Go to the Opacity tab, and load in the right map and unselect the albedo box, pick your desired color. I'm changing my render settings from direct lightning to path tracing. We also want to then drag down our ray epsilon to get the iris to show through our specular material. Adjust the rest as you see fit for now, this can all be tweaked more later on. Go to your human mesh and select both of the bones, and right click and select unfold all. Then selecting all from the bottom to the top, be sure you have all the bones selected and then right click. Select show tracks. In here you will see everything highlighted. Select the first parts of the position X, Y and Z frames and delete them all from the track, this will allow us to freely move our mesh around. Even if animated or not. As you can see we can now freely place our human as we see fit. Since I don't want my character to be animated for this project I'm going to again select all the bones and then go into my timeline and delete my other key frames, so only the one we want to use is remaining. Great so we are pretty happy with our human life form here, we are going to right click our base character mesh and select convert state to object. Or press C for the same result to make it editable. We now get the solid mesh without any bones, and we get to keep all our texture tags and our animated pose. Now we can select our new mesh and drag it up highest in our hierarchy. Select our now no longer needed master bone in the hierarchy menu and delete the old mesh so we only have our new editable object in the scene. Now it's time to create our main tree root that our character will be seated upon. In this case I choose to use a torus, but you could use a cylinder or any type of object, now select the rotation tool, or press R and spin it 90 degrees, then press E and position it above our scene floor. And the first thing we are going to pay attention to is how small our human mesh is, so we are going to fix that. Select the mesh again then go to its coordination tag scale and set the X, Y and Z to a solid 3. Much better. Now we can position our human on our torus. At this point we've gotten far enough to set our scene size, I'm going to render it at 2048 by 2560 with 100 dpi. Pop in a camera for better scene control, select the camera and go to the objective tag. We'll set our lens to 75. 
Now in the viewport we are going to our display tag and change our viewport to guarded shading and lines, to better see what we are doing while working. We can now see the polygon surfaces. Select the torus, put ring segments at 64, pipe segments at 32 and our torus radius to 200. Reposition our mesh. You can select different camera angles to make it easier for you to place it correctly. Alright great work, it should now look something like this. Save your scene now and often. Now it's time to bring out the plugin that we are going to be creating our vegetation with. Ivy Grower, Procedural Grown Ivy Simply and Neatly. Since we installed it before we can now select it in our plugin tab, but I would recommend doing like me and bringing out the plugin to our toolbar to be able to have better control of our simulation plugin tool. To do this, right click on your upper toolbar anywhere empty and select Customize Palette. Type in Ivy, the plugin logo leaf should now appear, drag this into your desired location tab. Once we have it out we are ready to activate the plugin. To use it, select the desired mesh to put Ivy on, in this case the torus. Double clicking on the mesh surface will result in a yellow dot appearing on the mesh, this will be the birth location for the simulation. So in the Ivy plugin head into growth. I have my primary weight set to 25. Random weight to 50. And bump of the gravity weight as well. We'll also reduce the density a bit. But you can play around with the settings to get the best result for your scene. Now finally, click on start growing and we'll see the simulated spline start growing over our mesh, pretty cool how it works. You can see on the plugin how many live branches we are currently simulating, a live branch is a growing one. Now that we have something we are happy to try out we'll click stop growing. Then select the birth tag and set the branch size to something small and thin like 0.75. And the leaf size slightly larger than our branch size. The leaf density to a 0.7. Click on give birth. And we now have our new ivy mesh in our project scene. If you are growing and creating a lot of ivy, I suggest you pause your render engine, as to not be stuck in a calculation loop when constantly creating new points. I'm actually going to bring down my density even more on my leaves. Keep selecting new parts of the torus and generate more ivy until you are happy with the result, you can play around with the settings and make small patches of generated ivy to connect parts to each other. Nice, now you can go ahead and adjust the root simulation gravity to the fullest and select parts on the back of the torus, to get a nice natural falling effect on the vegetation. Once we have something decent it's time to group together our ivy by selecting them all in the hierarchy and pressing Alt plus G to group them together, good, we can then minimize the ivy tab, don't forget to name you nulls to keep track of things. As you can see we are starting to end up with a lot of unwanted duplicate materials, to get rid of these we are going to do something different than we did in the start. Instead of dragging all of these materials on top of each other, go up to your project tab. Right click anywhere empty and go to customize palette again and search for duplicate, here in the bottom we will find the option we are looking for. The function is named remove all the duplicate materials drag this function into your project tab. Then simply click it to get rid of the undesired textures. I will then convert our IV materials into octane materials, if the material preview hasn't updated in your material tab simply double click on the material icon then double click the preview picture to update it in the scene. Now enter our leaf material and make them into diffuse materials, they will be glossy by default, then open the node editor tab, here we will want to drag our leaf diffuse material into the transmission tag as well, do this for all leaf materials. Don't do it to the roots. This will allow light to better pass through our leaves when we add some sunlight. And thus getting a more natural feeling. So now we are ready to light our scene, we'll do this by a simple octane daylight. Add it to our scene and adjust the light to desired position, you can go into the light tag and reduce the power if needed. Now it's time to create our wooden material. So create a glossy material drag in your diffuse, reflection, roughness and normal map then, head into the node editor and search for displacement, add the displacement tag and drag in our displacement material. 
click the displacement tag and change resolution to 4K and lower the height to something like 2 or 5 and pull the medium height up slightly. Add the material to our torus, for Octane we'll wanna select circular material mapping and tile it with 3 or 4 and select seamless option. Nice work, now we got a decent looking wooden torus I must admit. We could add a noise driven displacement to the torus if we wanted more distortion for the wood and randomness to the mesh, but for performance and aesthetic reasons we won't be using that for this project. Then we'll group our torus groups with our ivy groups and name it something like torus and ivy group, then hide it from our scene. Because it's now finally time to get rid of this nude dude and start creating some cloth. Yay! To do this we'll be using a simple plane object. If you have turned lines off, I would suggest turning them back on at this point. Create a plane object and place it above your character. We'll adjust the width of our plane to something similar like what you see here, make a even amount of sections 36 by 36 will work just fine. Now, create a cylinder, place the cylinder right at the base of your character's head, adjust the radius to slightly below the human's head's radius, since it will be dynamic and stretch over it. Make sure your cylinder is passing through the plane. Cool. So now go up to your menu tab and grab a bool object. Put the plane mesh inside the bool and the cylinder below the plane. You'll now see a hole appearing in our plane mesh. We can now position our cylinder a final time if needed, when happy, and you should be sure you are, because we can't adjust this hole with ease later. Now it will need to be made into a editable object in order to be simulated. So when ready select the bool and press C to make our mesh editable. We can then delete our cylinder object and drag our mesh out of the null, rename the null to helper, as we'll need a empty null soon. Right click on the plane go into simulation tags and select cloth tag, and then select our human mesh and do the same, but add a cloth collider to our human, select the collider tag set the bounce to a 2, and the friction to 75%. Then we head back to our plane cloth tag. Here we find what controls the simulation's desire to go back into the plane's flat shape, we want our stiffness to 100% as this controls the outer springs, but no need to get deeper into that now, so to get nice cloth folds we'll put the flexion to something very low, like a 0 or 2. Put a low bounce value, 2 is fine, and we don't have to touch the friction tag and, iterations you can put at a 3. Go into collision and set on, self collision option. Time to save the project before we get into starting dynamics. We can now test our cloth, press play to see the result. It will be a bit wonky, time to make it more subdivided, so select our plane and go into the upper menu, simulation, cloth simulation, and hold alt while selecting to add it directly to the mesh, otherwise drag our plane into the simulation tool in our hierarchy. If you are ending up with the mesh clipping through or wonky dynamics still, we can help with this by going to edit, then project settings. First of you will want to set the project time to around 500 or 600 frames to get a decent simulation work time. Then in the project setting tab go over to dynamics, then expert tag, and put steps at 15 and 25 to make more calculations of the simulation for a better result, you can also reduce collision margin at your own risk. If you are still getting strange results you might need to make your scene larger in scale. Then go back to frame 0 and simulate again and play around in the cloth tag settings until you are happy with the result. Try setting the cloth drag to 20% for a slower and smoother simulation. I also cranked up the gravity force to 11 to have it adjust more to our character's shape. In case you need to adjust the plane. Simply move the plane's cloth tag onto the helper null and move your cloth simulation mesh to your new point, when done move the tag from the null back to the plane. Unless you move the tag, your plane will be stuck in its position. And will only move when simulation is active. Simulate again until you have a good fit on your character. If needed you can add other primitive object, with collider tags on to control your simulation, with animated colliders. That however won't be needed for this. Now that we know we have a good simulation in our project, we can click on our cloth simulation in the hierarchy and put up the subdivisions to 2 or a 3, you can also add more thickness to the cloth if desired, but we won't touch it in this case, 
also with more subdivisions we will have a heavier simulation. Now that we are happy with the cloth we are ready to bake our dynamics, select the cloth simulation plane tag, and go into the dynamics tag, here we will click bake simulation. The scene will now play through, this first cache should not take too long. Once baked we can now go through our timeline to a desired point in the simulation where we are happy with the look of our cloth. Since we are not planning on making the cloth animated I suggest you put the subdivisions on one or two on the cloth simulation, as we are going to make it editable and static for this case, on the desired frame select the cloth simulation in the selecting and press C. Or right click the cloth and make current state into object. Remove the excess nulls and empty objects and drag your new cloth mesh out of the null and place it as a child of our human mesh. Now with all our objects such as ivy, human, torus and the cloth grouped together in a null, we can rotate it sideways together and a bit to the side. Now add a new plane object, make it longer and thinner than the other plane object we made before. This will be the cloth for our torus. Once again use the key button E for moving. R for rotating and T for transforming size. Make the object split double in the length to make up for stretching. Make a new cloth tag with the same settings as before. You can duplicate the old tag by dragging it with control pressed down and placing it on the null and once duplicated we can then place it on the new plane. Dragging it directly to the plane will not work. As it will inherit our old plane position. In this cloth tag we'll want to go into our dynamics and check on the tier option. This does exactly what it sounds like, awesome cloth tiering. We'll wanna up this percentage to maybe 180 to 200. You can play around with this to get the right effect. Before starting the scene, we'll want to up our subdivisions again, so put the plane into a new cloth simulation, by grabbing one from your simulation menu tab, at the top menu. Here self-collision will really play its part as the cloth will end up destroying itself upon collision. When needed drag the cloth tag back to the helper null and position your plane to fit on a good place for our torus, adjust the plane size as needed. Duplicate the plane into more cloths to place around the torus, keep using the helper null for positioning. A tip is to put them a bit above each other, as to not get collision earlier than we want. You can try making a big plane with a low tear for some interesting background stuff, even animate a collider on a sphere to help with the tearing, in this case I found smaller planes across gave a neat effect for natural wrapping to the torus and a windy look. Adjust the rotations of the planes for more randomness. Group together all your cloth and name the group to extra cloth. When happy with your simulation it's time to start baking these again, to do this select all the cloth tags on our new planes then go into dynamics and bake. Bake bake bake. This will take a while. You are doing great though and have my full emotional cold support. I believe in you, maybe take a piss break or something. Coffee. C40 is love. Eat a snack, watch a video. Download more of my gum road stuff. Maybe even follow me at Instagram at ek4h. Alright we are done. Great now that all our cloth is simulated we can group everything together and reposition our Taurus object containing all the cloth, ivy and life form. Head into your camera and select composition and enable everything from grids, to golden selection, to help you place the camera in a good spot in the scene, when happy right click on the camera in your hierarchy, then right click on the camera go into cinema 4D tags and add a protection tag. This will help with any headaches from accidentally moving stuff. You can make another camera and name this one free camera if you need to position yourself again. If desired you can make your cloths editable, select polygons, and go to lasso selection with the mouse and select unwanted cloth parts and delete those polygons. Nice, then we are good to go into creating some more materials. 
we'll make our cloth material in a glossy material, put correlating maps in their spot. Set mapping to cubic and octane and tile it two or three times to get a smaller texture. For the eyes we'll create a glowing neon diffuse material, enter the node-based editor and select two RGB spectrums, make one dark yellow and one brighter orange, type emission and select the black body emission tag. Drag your dark RGB spectrum into distribution channel, and the brighter into the texture channel, then select the black body tag, put on surface brightness option. Lower the power to 25 to 50 and put the sample rate to a 100. In polygon mode go to selections, use the select all surface tool to target all the eyes polygons, with them both selected go into selection tab menu, and click on set selection, the orange triangle with the arrow. This will make a new texture selection tag for our eyes, all the way to the right side on our mesh in the hierarchy, drag the new glowing texture to our mesh, and in the material tag you'll want to drag our new selection into the empty selection spot on our neon material. We should now have some glowing eyes for our human. Dope. If the scene is getting heavy I recommend you hide your ivy group from the scene. It's now time to create some scenery for our art piece, it's looking good, but we want a bit of depth to it. I like to envision this guy sitting up in a forest with really high trees, so we'll go for that and add a cylinder to our project. Make the cylinder about 1800 to 2000 centimeters in length depending on the distance you like the trees to be set at. Put the radius segments at 64. Grab a cloner object from the top menu, place the cylinder inside of the cloner. Set the cloner option to grid array, increase all the distances, play around with the clone numbers until you find the amount you are looking for. Once happy we create our new tree material, we once again use a glossy one and place the correlating maps in the material. Use a cylindrical mapping and tile it to desired point, you are going to want to adjust the texture length to be shorter to fix the stretching of the texture. Set it to seamless. Once we got our material on our cylinder we can go into our effects tab, with our cloner selected, pick a random effector. Make sure we have our cloner highlighted to have it affected instantly, otherwise you need to drag it into the cloner's effector tab. We should now have a more random position. Now play around with the distances and strength of the randomness, also enable rotation, set the first to 90 degrees in the random effector, so we get some variation of the face of the tree to the camera, and we set the other rotation angles to 2 for a more natural feeling. If our clones are to close no matter what position we change, we can fix this by adding another effector, grab a push apart effector and increase the strength, until you are okay with the result. If you think it's a bit boring with the naked trees we can simulate more ivy, by dragging out our cylinder out of the cloner for a moment, and then creating new ivy on our cylinder mesh, this ivy I would make bigger branches and bigger leaves on and adjust the density on. One big ivy was enough for me. Duplicate it or make instances depending on how much process power you feel on spending on this ivy. As always save the project. Once done with the ivy simulation put the cylinder back in the cloner and manually place your tree ivy into the scene. Now that we are happy with how the scene is looking and I must say, it's as awesome as I said it would be. We can adjust our final rending settings, be sure to select alpha channel and remove the environment option inside octane, and also select alpha channel in your save settings. This will give us a transparent render, be sure to use PNG or other alpha supportive file format. We can now go into our Octane camera and enable post-processing, I put mine around 65 with a slight increase on the glow power. I also adjusted the glow amount and glow angle. We now have some nice glowing light from the eyes, into our scene. Sweet. Time to add some depth of field, to do this go into your Octane camera tag, set the aperture to about a 7, in the Octane preview window set your focus with the green Octane focus tool. Be sure to click it off once happy, so we don't accidentally change our focus. My camera's f-stop is set to 0.35. Once all of that is done I would finally recommend you to duplicate your camera, maybe even a few times, then go into your Octane camera tag and select different cameras in your camera imager menu, for each one to see what fits best, 
play around with the gamma and exposure to get better results needed for the type of camera you have picked. I used a camera that was initially pretty dark but gave nice contrast with some adjustments. Never settle for the first camera Octane hands you by default. Move the feet and legs of the character mesh for a cleaner composition, this is of course optional. Alright and now we are pretty much done, check over any final adjustments you feel necessary. You are now ready to send this over to rendering. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you had fun, I'd love to see whatever you end up making using these techniques, so feel free to contact me and share your work. Have a good day and good luck. I'll see you on the other side. Thank <laughs> you.